I said, Praise the Lord. I'm happy to be with you tonight. And I pray the Lord will strengthen you, give you backbone. You will stand, you will work. And this work will prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. Now you can sit down. I want to know this uh, from a solo here. Can you only solo people now to stand up? Where are you? Wonderful. God bless you. And the rain and the showers of heaven pour upon your life in Jesus' name. I see you, I see you another time as we come for the Monday Bible study. Uh, those who are from Mushi, where are we? Our people. Wonderful. The Lord bless you. And the Lord enrich your life in Jesus' name. About our, our really people. Great. Everybody say great. The Lord be with you. Something will happen to you today. And then our people, Osho, the people. That's where you are. The Lord be with you. Something great happening today. I will be a partaker. Everybody now will stand up. The Lord is doing something today. It will enrich your life. And anything that's around you, like cobweb from somewhere, everything will clear away. What a cheerless of that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. Thank you for these workers. Thank you for the joy of the Lord. I pray, Lord, you strengthen everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that today, this very day, Lord, I pray that today, this very day, your blessing will enrich every life in Jesus' name. Lord, we're asking you that today you touch every life and you breathe upon everyone. Strengthen the weak. Lord, we're asking you that this very day, this very day, Lord, you strengthen every backbone. And you strengthen our mind that, Lord, this work, we will do it. And this work will prosper in every hand in Jesus' name. As we're using us to bless other people, we pray that your blessings will flow into every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Give us insight. And give us wisdom. And give us strength. And give us the grace that this work will not lack all that it needs in Jesus' name. Use your people to reach every community. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me another amen before you sit down. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down now. We're looking at Psalm 68. Psalm 68. I'm reading from verse 19. Psalm 68. We're looking at verse 19. It says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. And then there's a little word there at the end of the verse. What is that? It's a sailor. What does that mean? It means stop. It means pause. It means think. It says, think about that. That every day the Lord wants to overload us with blessing. I want you to look at the verses we're reading today. And as we start with this, and it says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us. Mark that word, daily. He daily loadeth us with benefits. That word means blessing. That word means enrichment. That word means the fulfillment of the promise of God that he has given us. And then it says, it's the God of our salvation. He gave us salvation in Christ. And because of that, he will give us every other thing that we need. Every blessing you need will be enriched in your life in Jesus' name. But that's what they're us. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us. We need to understand that. Who are the us there? Who are the people there? Because, you know, you cannot claim a letter that belongs to another person. 
there are people that the Lord is talking about here and he says he daily loads us with benefits come back to verse 11 in verse 11 it says the Lord gave the word and great was a company of those that published it those are the us there those are the people that publish the word of God they proclaim the word of God. They preach the word of God. It says the Lord gave the word. He has given the word of the gospel. And the word of his grace. And the word of godliness. And the word that will bring salvation to people. The Lord gave the word. It's the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life that's the word he has given and the people that had that it says great was a company of the people that, <clears throat> that proclaimed that that published that those are the soul winners thank god i'm one of them those are the servants of god thank god i am those are the stewards of the mystery of the gospel and those are the soldiers of christ and now when it says blessed be the lord who daily loads us loads us workers loads us proclaimers loads us preachers loads us the people that take the word and they go to publish that come back to that uh, verse 19 blessed be the lord who daily loads us. Let me look at that word us now from the perspective of look at verse 18. Verse 18. He has ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also. That the Lord God might dwell among them and then after saying that in verse 18 it now goes on to say blessed be the lord who daily loads us who are the us now looking at him from this perspective verse 18 that was ascended on high that has led captivity captive and thou hast received gifts for men gifts for men he's talking about a kind of ministers here come to ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 11. Why don't you back up to verse 8? Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading here from verse 8. Wherefore, saith he, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. You remember, that's what we read in verse 18 of Psalm 68. And it says, it's talking about, actually, when you look at Psalm 68, it's looking forward. It's looking forward to when Christ will come. And when Christ will die on the cross of Calvary. And when Christ will rise again. And then as he rises again, he rises again. He breathes upon his own disciples and those apostles. And he says, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And then he said, you tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth and he gave gifts unto men that's the gift of the holy ghost look at this in verse 9 now that he ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth talking about jesus christ who died and was buried and then he goes on to say he that descended is he also that ascended up then he says far above all heavens and then that he might feel all in all and remember he said when he ascended he gave gifts unto men who are those men look at this verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers then it says for the perfecting of the saints then it says for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of christ you understand then as we come back to psalm 68 he gave gifts unto men 
What does that mean? He gave them to be apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and he gave them those the gifts of evangelism. And he says, it's for the perfecting of the saints. Come back to Psalm 68. We're looking at verse 18. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. And now you understand the gifts he's talking about. He gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfection of the saints and the work of the ministry and for the defining of the body of Christ. And then it says, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. That means he's talking about the servants of the Lord, the apostles of the Lord, the preachers of the gospel, and the pastors of the churches. He'll daily load us for blessings. Are you there? I said he'll daily load you with blessing. Then, it, look at that verse 18 again. Yea, for the rebellious also. Ah, what does that mean? That is, he gave gifts unto men. And then it says, and for the rebellious also. And then you are thinking, how does he give gifts to the rebellious? They are rebellious. How does he give gifts to them? Look at that man. His name is Saul of Tarsus. And then he's been rebelling against the name of Christ. And it says he hated that name. He wanted to destroy that name. And then he was going on the way to Damascus, rebelling against the gospel and rebelling against the grace of God and rebelling against what Christ has come to purchase for us. All of a sudden, a sound from heaven and the light shone and he fell to the ground and he said, Saul, Saul, rebellious soul. Saul, Saul, persecuting Saul. Saul, Saul, injurious Saul. Why persecutest thou me? It is hard for you to kick against the priest. He looked up and said, Lord, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. What will I do now? He said, go there to Damascus. It will be shown you what you will do. And the Lord made that man an apostle. As he gave gifts to Peter, and he gave to John, and he gave to James, and gave to the rest of them, he gave to the rebellious also. Whatever you were in the past, the past is gone. You were a sinner in the past, now you are a child of God. You were rebellious in the past, now you are a redeemed soul. And you were an unbeliever in the past, but now the Lord is saying that he has given gifts. And that gift he has given to you, you will not miss the gift in Jesus' name. An apostle there. I said an apostle there. And then there's an evangelist there. There is a woman leader there. There is a youth leader there. Whatever you want in the past, let's block our minds from the past. And let all the rebellion of the past, let everything vanish away in Jesus' name. Look at this one, look at this one. And it says, he gave gifts to the rebellious also that the Lord God might dwell among them. He'll dwell among us. Because there's no more rebellion and there's no more sin. Now there's redemption. And now there is salvation. And he gave gifts unto all men. And then it's all these people. The apostles. The prophets. And the evangelists. And the pastors and the teachers. And all the soul winners. All the servants of God. That he now says, blessed be the Lord God. God who daily loadeth us. If you are part of that us, where are you there? It will load your world blessing. You come out, it will be blessing. You evangelize, it will be blessing. And you are touching lives, it will be blessing in Jesus' name. And it says, he does that daily. He daily loadeth us with benefits. Why does he do that every day? We serve him every day. He blesses us every day. If we serve him once a week, uh -huh, I don't want to tell the rest. If you serve him only once a month, I don't want to tell you how your blessing will be. If once in a while, once a year, then you come out, you say, I'm serving God today. You limit your blessing. But when you say, I'm serving him daily, somebody there. I'm working for him daily. Somebody there. I'm witnessing daily. Somebody there. I'm evangelizing daily. As we serve him every day. As we win souls every day. As we touch the lives of people every day. He daily loads us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation. I'm talking to you tonight on daily benefits for dutiful souls. 
daily benefits for dutiful souls. Daily benefits for dutiful souls. There are three things we're going to consider. Number one, the commitment of our Lord and Savior. The commitment of our Lord and Savior. See what Christ himself has done. See what he did for us and see the example and see the model and see the pattern that he left behind the commitment of our Lord and Savior. Number two, the continuity of our labor and soul winning. The continuity of our labor and soul winning. The continuity of our labor and soul winning. Number three is the comprehension. That's what means the understanding of our loyalty and sacrifice. The comprehension of our loyalty and sacrifice. Come back to number one. Tell me number one, somebody there. The commitment of our Lord and Savior. I want to check up. and You need to check up because it tells us to follow the example of Jesus. It tells us to follow the pattern of Jesus. It tells you to follow the model of Jesus. If I don't know what he did, and I don't know how he did it, how can I follow his example? That's why we want to find out how did Jesus actually, our Lord and Master, how did he obey this great commission from the Father? He said, my Father sent me. And he was always conscious of that. My father sent me. And I must do the work. And I must finish the work that my father has sent me to do. And now we're looking at his commitment. I pray that that commitment will be your commitment. Because like the savior, like the saved. Like father, like son. Like master, like servant. Like Christ, like Christian. Like shepherd, like the sheep. And so, all his qualities, everything he has done, by the grace of God, you will do. And let's come to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, and I'm reading here from verse 47. Luke chapter 19, we're reading from verse 47. It says in verse 47, and he taught daily in the temple. Mark that word, daily. You understand? That's the reason. Lord source were blessing daily. Blessed be the Lord our God, who daily loadeth us with benefits. Why is he loading us with benefits? Because we're following the pattern of Christ. And every day we're committed to that work. Every day we're submissive to that yoke of the Lord. It says, and he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the, and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do. For all the people were very attentive to hear him. It says, in the case of Jesus Christ, look at the commitment of Jesus Christ every day. Every day. Every day he was at it. That's how we succeed. If you go to school and you go only once in a while, that's, how not, that's not how we succeed. If you go to the market and you go once in a while, that's not how we succeed. If you go to any profession and then you go once in a while, that's not how we make it in life. You make it in life because you say this is something that must be done. And every day, every day, every day I commit myself to that. Jesus Christ, when he came to this world, he knew that he came to do something. What did he come to do? Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man is come to seek that which was lost. And then he did that every day, every day. Uh, let, let's look at um, John chapter 9. John chapter 9, and you see the commitment of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the same commitment he's expecting from you. That if you say that you are a saved soul, you say that you are a worker. You say that you are a soul winner. You say that you are a preacher of the gospel. You say that you are one of those servants. He gave them gifts, the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And he said, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The word daily must underline your service unto the Lord. In John chapter 9, John chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 4. I must work. The works of him that sent me while it is day. He said, 
because the night cometh when no man can walk. I must walk. Can you say that? Can you say that aloud? Now don't just say that with a mouth. You say from the depth of your heart. Won't you go? You see, if we're going to follow Christ, we just know. I can't say, I must sleep. I must eat. I must play. I must be entertained. I must roam around. I must look for fresh air. I must visit this and visit that. It says, I must work. And it was that commitment that made him to commit every day to that work. He prayed to multitudes. He prayed to individuals. He prayed to men. He prayed to women. He prayed to the young. He prayed to the old. Because he said, I'm going to reach everyone I can reach. I'm going to touch every life I can touch. And everywhere I go, anywhere you are, you're not just there. You are there for ministry. Let's say, for example, you are in the bus. You understand in the bus there, I must preach. And you understand, if you go on the street, you're not just roaming about and walking. There is something the Lord has given you to do. And you're saying, I must preach. You're saying that every day demands me to fulfill the duty he has given me to do. And then he says in verse 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And I pray that your own light will so shine before men. That they will see your good works and your involvement and commitment. And then they will give glory to God on your behalf in Jesus' name. Oh, we're coming to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 31. John chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 31. It says, in the meantime, while his disciples uh, prayed, prayed him, saying, Master, eat. And he said unto them, I have meat to eat that she know not of. I have meat to eat that she know not of. The Lord is telling us something here. Now talk, think about this in the natural. Look up here for a moment. Since we are born into this world, I would say except at special times that to just deny yourself of drinking water, you drank water every day, except maybe some isolated cases. Am I talking to somebody there? And then about food. Since we are born into this world, except at isolated times. And those times, we can count on the fingers of our hand that you didn't eat, you ate every day. And then Jesus Christ was telling his own disciples because they said, Master, we eat every day. You must be hungry. Eat. Master, eat. They were putting pressure on him. You need food. You need food for your body. Eat. We eat every day. He said, I have food to eat that you know not of. Because the work that is committed in my hand, that's what I do. I do that every day. It's the commitment of the Lord. And that's what the Lord is expecting from you. That you come to the understanding. As I sleep every day, I must win souls every day. As I eat every day, I must preach every day. As I drink water every day, I must touch somebody's life every day. That's what the Lord is saying. And then it says in verse 34, in verse 34, look at what it says. And Jesus said unto them, my meat, my food, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. It says, like you are thinking about food and you are eating that food every day. My own food and my own meat and my own drink is to do the work of him that sent me and to finish his work. You'll finish in Jesus' name. You know, even when Jesus Christ was still young, before he came to the open and to the public ministry, look at what happens in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 49. Uh, Joseph and Mary are taking him to Jerusalem to worship. And then as they got there, they came back. They thought everything was ended. Everything was finished. And then as they went to this journey, they couldn't find him. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? And eventually, they now began and they went to, you know, back to Jerusalem. And then they saw him. When they saw him, they said, where did you come here? 
I will be in a looking for you and searching for you. Look at his answer in uh, Luke chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 49. Luke chapter 2, verse 49. And he said unto them, and he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not, knew ye not, that I must be about my father's business? Don't you know that? I must be about my father's business. And that's what you have to say if you're following the example of Christ. And you're following the model of Christ. You say, why are you looking for me? You know, some people, your friends will come. They say, uh -uh, Mike, what's happening to you? I came to your house, uh, you know, Saturday morning. And I couldn't uh, find you. And then another person came, you know, in the office and said, you know, over the weekend, you know, you know what happened, uh, Mike? I tried to get to your house because I've been thinking and thinking. I just want to just to come and have a nice time together. And every time I try to find you and knock at your door, I, I never find you. And then you tell them what Jesus told them because I'm seeing somebody there like Jesus Christ. I said, I see somebody there like Jesus Christ. The same passion you will have, the same commitment you will have, and the same devotion to the word of God and the work of God you will have. He said, how is it that you sought for me? Don't you know, knew ye not that I must be at my father's business? You will be there and you will do it. And this work will prosper in your hands in Jesus' name. We're coming to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 36. Mark chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 36. And Simon, and they that were him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Let me tell you what's happening here. What happened there is that he was in a location. He was in a community. Let me say directly to you. He was in a district. And all the people there in that district, they were happy about his ministry. Because, you know, souls were getting saved. And the sick were getting healed. And the oppressed were getting delivered. And then Peter came because he had gone to the mountain top to pray. And now as he found him, he said, Lord Jesus, you know what? This is a wonderful district. There is revival in this district. And there is you know, everybody just coming in this district. All men seek for you in this district. What did he say? Look at verse 38. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns. Let us go to the next district. Let us go to the next location. Let us go to the next place where your people that I may preach there also. I've done something here. I've preached over here. I've walked over here. I've won souls here. Let us go to the next place and preach there also. For therefore came I forth. He said, that's why I exist. Therefore came I forth. That's why I live. Well, because therefore came I forth. That's why I eat. I don't eat just to eat. I eat to get strength so I can do the work he has given me to do. That's why I sleep. I sleep so that I can renew my strength and go forth and preach. That's why I read. I read so I can have knowledge and go and preach. That's why I take care of myself. I take care of myself so that I can go and do something. Whatever else you do, your life... This is life, and this is how to live. Whatever I'm doing now, I'm doing so that I can do that. Whatever, wherever I am now, I am there so that I can. That's the attitude of Jesus Christ. That's the compelling spirit and the compelling force in Jesus Christ. You are getting it. It's getting inside you. Somebody there said it's getting inside you. This same passion you will have. And the same commitment you, can, you will have. You'll be able to talk like Jesus Christ. That this is why I exist. There is no other reason for me to live on earth. When you got born again. The best that could have happened to you. Is that God will just take you. And take you to heaven. But no. He said no. You have work to do. 
Somebody there is going to become a pastor. You have work there to do. Somebody there, a woman leader, you have work to do. That's why he left you here. And then if you're busy with other things and God is saying, what are you doing? That's not why I left you there. You're eating and eating and eating and then you finish eating now. Can I have more? Can I have more? He says, that's not why you are there. You are there so that you eat enough to give you strength and you launch out. Somebody there where is he? You launch out. I said you launch out. You will do the work in Jesus name. I'm looking at Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. And I'm reading here from verse 49. Mark chapter 14. And we're looking at verse 49. And you're telling me the word that strikes you here. Are you there? Mark chapter 14, verse 49. I was, I was, I was daily with you in the temple. Do you watch? Teaching. You see, Jesus Christ, you cannot mark a day, a, a wasted day. You cannot find a day, a day when there was not, not something to do. You cannot find a day, a useless day, a worthless day. He said, I was daily with you in the temple teaching. And that's what the Lord wants you to understand. You're a soul winner. I'm there daily and I'm preaching. I'm there daily, I'm witnessing. I'm there daily, I'm doing the work he has given me to do. You will do it. And that's the reason why, blessed be the God who daily loads us. He's loading us daily with benefits because we're at each every day. We're committed to each every day. And because we're committed to the work every day, that's why daily blessings will come. Daily joy will come. Daily miracle will come. Daily empowerment will come. It will happen to you. I told you before, you heard it before. Maybe you heard it over the, over the satellite that this year will be the best year you ever lived in your life. A year of miracle, a year of power, a year of provision, a year of joy, a year of marriage over there, a year of childbearing over there because Blessed be God the Lord that daily loadeth us with benefits. Why is daily loading us with benefits? Because we are daily involved in the work of the Lord. And we're not saying, you know, today I cannot go. Thank God you will go. I see successful people. I see people that are energetic and you will serve. And I will say, those are my children. Those are my people. We will do it together in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number two now. Is the continuity of our labor. The continuity of our labor and soul winning. Now we have seen how Christ did it. And you have seen the word daily in the ministry of Jesus Christ. We are going to look at the uh, apostles now and the disciples and the people that followed in the Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles, we're looking at chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 46. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 46. See this and see uh, the word we are looking at in the life of Jesus and in the lives of his own disciples. And they continuing. What? What? Tell me out loud. You will love that word. That word will become part of your life. It says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Look at this, praising God and having favor with all people, all the people, and the Lord added to the church. What? The Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. How did he add to the church daily? Did the, the, the church just stay inside and those people daily on their own? They were coming. Does it work like that? No. They went out daily 
They touched the lives of the people daily. They were evangelizing daily. And they were saying, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You cannot in your own self-righteousness save yourself. But Jesus Christ died for you. His salvation is available for you. He said, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. And as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even as many as believed on his name. And the people said, yes. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It's happening there in that district. It's happening there in that location. It's happening there in that community. And the people daily came and they responded to the daily preaching. And many were added to the church. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. And here we're reading from verse 40. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 verse 40. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them. When they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, then sorrowing, regretting, complaining. You know, look up here. You know, sometimes because you go out to witness, and then you knocked at the door of somebody and the fellow said, who are you? Are you one of those who from deep and I'm coming to trouble us everywhere? Come to Jesus. If you knock at this door anymore and then he goes on to, in the house to go and take a whip. And then when you saw that, you didn't even wait. You didn't allow him to you know, try it on you. And then you ran away and then you said, that's what daily they are talking about. I saw something today. I met something today. God, you will forgive me. I don't think that this thing is possible. I will do it. I will go back to that same place again. Somebody there said you will go back again. And they came and they were, what were they doing? That word there, it says they were rejoicing. You will rejoice. And when those people persecute us, when they see your joy, they will say, what are we going to do? And then the next day you come again Go, go, go. You knock at the door. Who is that? And then with a broad Jesus smile on your face, you say, I am. I didn't finish what I wanted to tell you yesterday because you didn't pay attention. I came to tell you that God is going to open heaven and bless you. If you're sick, God will heal you. If you oppress anything, any problem you have, I just want to tell you, do you know, I can pray for you and something will happen. You say, come and sit down. And then you sit down. And then you tell him the word. And he gives his life to the Lord Jesus Christ because you will not give up. Somebody there, you will not give up. Uh, look at that verse there in chapter 5. I'm reading here once again. It says rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And verse 42, you are going to tell me the first two words there. Tell me, tell me loud, loud, loud. And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Lord that daily loadeth us with blessing. Why does he daily loaded, load us with blessing? Because we ourselves were children of blessing every day. We're going out, we're touching the lives of the people and every day, every day we're doing it. You will do the will of God. And as you do that will of God, I pray the blessings of the Lord will be every day in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 4. And it says, and as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that they ordained of the apostles and it says and elders which were at Jerusalem look at verse 5 and so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number and increased in number daily that is every day there's somebody coming into the kingdom it will happen through you Every day, there's somebody repenting. Every day, there's somebody getting saved. And it says, the church began to increase. Your church will increase. That local church where you are, I don't mean just the pastor. I don't mean just, uh, you know, the preacher there. I mean all of us who are there. Through you, that church will increase. 
and it is daily daily because you'll be touching their lives and as you are touching their lives they will be coming to the Lord. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. I'm reading from verses 16 and 17. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17 verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Look at verse 17. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout uh, persons in the market what's the word there? daily with them that met with him he saw people every day it was not a hermit that hid himself in one corner somewhere our street is dangerous our community is dangerous a place here, yeah, all those gangs, they may come out at any time. And because of all this kind of local war, I don't want to, you know, waste my time and waste my life. And they're hitting somewhere. But Paul, the apostle, he came out. I will come out. Ah, there you are. I said, I will come out. Because, you know, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Because all your, your life is hid with Christ in God. He will protect you. I said he will protect you. And then, because you're not going out for fun fear. You're not going out for entertainment. You're not going out just to waste your time. You're going out because you have a call upon your life. And you have a duty upon your life. And you have a commission. And that commission, you are going to fulfill that commission. I will hear your testimony. I will see your face again. You say, Pastor, you said so. I'm experiencing blessing every day. I'm experiencing protection every day. And the Lord will do it and confirm it in Jesus' name. It says over there in the marketplace, we go to the markets. We go where people are. Those bus stores, we go there deliberately. We go there. And all those places where people are congregating, maybe there, whatever it is, you have tracks in your pocket. You have tracks in your bag. And as you're going, you're giving everybody. But you don't give it with a frown on your face. You give it with cheerfulness. And you give it with happiness. It's not like you're carrying a burden on your shoulders. But they told us to give you a track. Do you want a track? Get this one. Who wants to get a track from Imo? Rose and sorrowful person. Be cheerful and then if you are happy with what you are giving out, let there be cheerfulness and say, my friend, can I give you this? This will touch your life and this will do so. Even the way you advertise it and publicize it, the way you give it out, you say, give it to me, give it to me. When you give him, you say, I have a brother at home, can you give me one for him? I have a sister at home, can you give her, me one for her? It will happen in Jesus name. And every day, every day somebody is doing that and every day we are touching lives look at now acts of the apostles chapter 19 acts of the apostles chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 9 i'm reading from verse 10 acts of the apostles chapter 19 we're looking at uh, verse 9 it says but when divers were hardened and believed not but make speak evil of that way before the multitude he departed from them and separated the disciples disputing tell me the next word disputing daily in the school of one tyrannous and they didn't have a church building there and they didn't have a place to you know accommodate them and where they were there were people that were opposing them and paul the apostle said opposition will not stop me somebody there opposition will not stop me and all the distractions as we learned in our building the body will not stop me will it stop you no, it will not stop you. And then it says, he went to a school compound. And in that school compound, and the people came. And then it says, every day, look at uh, verse 10. And this continued by the space of how many years? Two years. Every day. Every day. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Every day it continued. And this continued by the space of two years. So that all they that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Gentiles and Greeks. And it's going to happen in our community. 
everybody in this community, you mark all the houses well, there must be a church there. We must talk to somebody there. Touch one light there. Touch one light there. And then by the space of a few years, they said they have been here. And you find a member of the church in every house. Anywhere you go, there's a deeper light member there. I said there's a deeper light member there. I'm losing the amen I want. I said there's a deeper light member there. It will happen in Jesus. Let me show you something. Look at the next verse there. Because of that daily commitment, because of that daily ministration, look at uh, verse. Look at verse eleven. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Where are you? Special miracle. Special anointing. And special power. Look at verse twelve. So that from his body were brought unto the sea and cashews and aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them why because of this daily commitment and daily yieldedness to the work of the lord and uh, even all the believers uh, look at this in acts of the apostles chapter 8 Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 4 Therefore they that were scattered abroad Tell me the rest uh, You have not opened your Bible Acts chapter 8 verse 4 They that were scattered abroad Went everywhere Preaching the word Went everywhere preaching the word Even to, you know look up here Even tonight when we, as we finish The meeting here They went everywhere Went everywhere Went everywhere Gossiping, went everywhere. And how are you? You came. How did you like that message? That's what they are talking. But they went everywhere. What are they doing? They're preaching the word. They're not just talking to themselves. They're telling. They're showing people. People they will meet in the bus, and people they will meet in on the road. Today, as we have just heard the word, and then we go everywhere and we're preaching the word. And tomorrow, as we come to church and we're going back from church, we're going everywhere preaching the word. We're going to a place of work on Monday. We go everywhere, we're preaching the word. Everywhere we go, the preaching of the word will continue. My sister, God will use you. My brother, God will use you. This is our time. It's a year of revival, it's a year of evangelism. It's a year of miracle. And as we do each daily, as we do it daily, blessed be God that daily loads us with his blessing. I will see your load of blessing. I'm coming to point number three now. The comprehension of our loyalty and sacrifice. The comprehension of our loyalty and sacrifice. What do we call loyalty? When somebody has a master, when somebody has a director, when somebody has a leader and he says, I'm going to work under your leadership. I'm going to work under your direction. Loyalty means whether he's there or not, we're always doing it. We're always doing it. And, and that's right. Even the unbelievers, that's what they expect. Unbelievers, that's what they expect. Let me show you. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5 and you will see what a Pharaoh counted as loyalty and if he counted this as loyalty our master is Jesus our master is in heaven uh, Exodus chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 13 Exodus 5 verse 13 it says in verse 13 and the taskmasters hasted them saying fulfill your works your daily tasks as when there was straw and what happened here is that moses had come and he spoke to pharaoh and he said let my people go and then pharaoh said these people are my people who are your people that you say will go they are not going anywhere they must be loyal to me and what did he count as loyalty that they are doing it every day all the assignment he gave them that it must be every day and that is how we demonstrate a loyalty to the master if you are loyal to Christ if you are loyal to the commission he has given you every day look at verse 19 there in verse 19 it says and the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in an evil case after it was said ye shall not minish Diminish or subtract aught from your uh, from your bricks of your daily task. 
daily task. Uh, look up here. Isn't that if you look at a child that goes to school and a child that does not go every day, you say, this one is not committed. What's commitment? The child will have to go to school every day. That's how we know that they're committed. If you find a wife that is, uh, you know, well, the husband, and it's not cooking for the husband every day, you know, but, uh, darling, I want to take vacation today. What do you mean by vacation? Uh, today, you know, being in the kitchen is not, you know, it's not always easy. Especially if you're using wood and stove and all this is there for today. Excuse me, I'm going to take vacation. I saw one sister laughing that maybe she does that. God bless you. I know you are just happy. You know, if we're loyal, we're going to be doing that every day. You'll do it every day in Jesus' name. You, you know, the, the breadwinner in the house, you know, is giving money every day. And then he says, my wife, you know, today, I don't think I can and you know keep money you say why because i'm getting tired there's, there's no loyalty there loyalty means that i am committed to you and you are committed to me and then you are committed to the work of the lord you will do it somebody there said you will do it and it says it's every day I, I, look at this this uh, this one is uh, i don't know whether you'll say it's a negative example but you know sometimes negative examples are powerful let me show you judges chapter 16 judges chapter 16 and i'm reading here from verse 16 judges chapter 16 verse 16 and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his heart that's the delilah and samson you know what the philistines were at the back door and they were waiting and they said delilah this, the money is here come and look at it we will give you this money if you catch that man if you don't catch him you are going to lose this money and so we're here we're waiting and so delilah her loyalty was not to Samson. Her loyalty was to those people. This money, I want it. And God has promised you something in heaven. I said, God has promised you something in heaven. And he says, this miracle you are going to have. This blessing you are going to have. But go work for me today. Go work for me today. And when you come back, blessed be the Lord that daily loadeth us with benefits and then because your mind is on that i'll get my miracle i said i will get my miracle i will get my promotion i will get the power of god in my life your mind is there that's why you do that and then delilah said something tell me about this your power and he told him something that wasn't true and then the second day again tell me about this power and she kept on every day the people that want to catch if you want to catch somebody for christ you must continue every day you knock at their door now they say no i don't they will not tell you they say i'm a christian too they say i go to they are telling you other things they say i believe what you believe too but you can see in their lives it's not true you go there again you go there again how is it that the delilah that was looking for money will be more serious than you are god forbid I said, God forbid, Delilah, that wanted to make somebody fall, how you see that that person be stronger than you are, I say, God forbid, because you will make somebody rise up. You will make somebody get saved. You'll make somebody get to heaven. But that's the way. I wanted you to see that word, how Delilah succeeded in what she wanted to do, because it was every day, every day. If, if you do this work every day, I'm telling you, in no time from now, you will prosper. And this work will succeed in your hand in Jesus' name. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him that so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all he said and said, well, you know what he said. And eventually Delilah knew that, uh, you know, he had, uh, she had told uh, him, uh, she had told, he had told her uh, all he said and then they caught the man. You will catch men for Jesus. You will catch souls for Jesus. And you take them to the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And then when they did that, the Philistines gave her the money they promised her. And the Philistines are not going to be more faithful than God. When you do the work of God, miracles will just be following after you.
The signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. I'm talking about somebody there. In my name, they will lay hands on the seed and they shall recover. When you do it every day and you are faithful to the Lord every day, you'll see that the blessing of God will enrich your life. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. I'm reading here from verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 23. It says, but this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in, in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. It will be well with you. I said it will be well with you. Look at verse 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth, out of the land of Egypt unto this day have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets tell me the next word tell me out loud daily rising up early and sending them you know there are some people there you're having the morning cry before early in the morning you will rise up and then you're traversing and traveling around all your community hear the word of the lord jesus is the savior is the only way the way the truth and the life nobody comes to the father except by me you are doing that every day what happened why did you stop why did you stop look at that verse 25 again on the last line there it says all my servants the prophet daily rising up early and sending them daily daily and there's some of us there you, you know you read something from the bible in your quiet time and every day when you finish that you will send text to somebody it's about jesus christ is the son of god whosoever believeth in him shall not be condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already and then the following day again you have your quiet time and then you text something to somebody and you're send it to them daily and daily and daily or you get to your office and then you can use the email and then you are sending it may be just two sentences or three sentences jesus is coming again are you ready are you prepared and you are telling them jesus will answer your prayer he is a good god he will not forget the people that call upon him it says if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me but he has heard me because i believe on the lord it will not take you two three sentences but every day you are sending that messenger the message of life i said the message of life and it is going through you and many are going to get into the kingdom through you in jesus name because you're doing it every day because you're doing it every time and you will not allow any day to pass you'll not allow any moment to pass but the work will be done and now let's see let's come to this uh, uh, second kings chapter 25 second kings chapter 25 because from now on as you daily address yourself to the work of the lord daily blessings will be coming over your life Daily miracle all over your life. We're looking at a uh, Second Kings chapter twenty-five, and I'm reading from verse twenty-eight. Uh, Second Kings chapter twenty-five, from verse twenty-eight, and he spake kindly unto him. Heaven will speak kindly unto you, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon. Your throne will be higher than the throne of the people in the world in Jesus' name, and he changed his prison garments those prison garments of confinement everything will change from you the garment of sorrow and the garment of mourning and the garment of you know premature death in your extended family it is cancelled in jesus name and he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life i see somebody there all the days of your life blessing all the days of your life enrichment all the days of your life the joy of the lord in jesus name Look at verse 30, and his allowance was a continual allowance, a continual allowance, I pronounce it upon your life, a continual allowance, and the allowance, and his allowance was a continual allowance, giving him of the king, and tell me the next thing there, and a daily rate, a daily rate, a daily rate of every day, all the days of his life a daily rate of all the blessings you need all the days of your life healing every day 
prosperity every day progress every day fulfillment of the promise of god every day why because we now are attached to the king of kings and to the lord of laws and the work he gives us to do every day every day every day we we address ourselves to it and then we can join the psalmist and say blessed be the lord who daily loadeth me with benefits even the god of my salvation let's read that that way make it personal we're looking at it in psalm 68 and verse verse 19 everybody one go want you go blessed be the god who daily loadeth me with benefits even the god of my salvation read it for yourself let me hear you one two three go Once you go, final. You will bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. I forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thy iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases and it will renew your youth like the year like the, like the life of the eagle renewal has come for you and as you stand up stand up now and then you say every day every day i commit myself to the work of the lord this work will prosper in your hand the joy of the lord will be your strength daily blessing daily miracle daily power daily provision daily protection everything you need every day he'll do it for you tell the lord i'm going to do it tell the lord i'm going to do it every day every day every day i commit myself to this i'm going to do it and this work will prosper in my hand and daily will be your blessing he'll give your daily rate all the days of your life Are you still there? Yeah. Can I hear that amen again? Yeah. Raise up that hand. Daily miracle. Yeah. Daily healing. Yeah. Daily power. Yeah. Daily courage. Yeah. And daily blessing. Yeah. Coming upon your life in Jesus name. Yeah. Father we thank you this day. We thank you for the commitment you have given us now. Lord, I pray you bring courage in every heart in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, difficulties will not conquer us. Challenges will not conquer us. Distractions will not conquer us. I pray, Lord, the decision of every child of God and the decision of every brother, every sister to be daily committed to the work. Uphold that decision in Jesus' name. Give us the wisdom to do it. Give us the strength to do it. Give us the power to do it. Give us the enablement to do it. And Lord, we pray every day, every day, every day, souls will be coming in reality to the kingdom in Jesus' name. Signs and wonders will follow everyone. Miracles will follow everyone. Healing and health will follow everyone. Prosperity and provision will follow everyone. And I pray, Lord, daily, every time, you load us with your blessing. I pray for every brother, every sister. I pray whatever they have lagged until this day, begin to supply in Jesus' name. Give us all the grace we need, all the gifts we need, all the power we need. I pray if there's anyone sick there, touch them right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Any oppression there, I cancel that oppression. Set your people free. The miracle anyone needs, any family needs, give them that miracle right now. And signs, miracles, wonders will follow everyone back home. And I pray that your word in our mouth will draw souls in the kingdom of God every moment, every day of our lives. I pray, Lord, take sorrow away. Take all those regrets away. I take all the moodiness. Take everything away in Jesus' name. Joy, joy, joy. Miracle, happiness, provision will follow everyone back home. Touch everyone, Lord. No exception today. Everybody receiving something from you today. And blessed be our God who daily loadeth everyone for the miracle and the blessings of god i pray lord your people will see it in their lives 
And as they touch other lives and they bring more souls in, you'll be getting miracles more, more, and more into their lives in Jesus' name. Confirm each in every life. In Jesus' name, I pray. You are blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. You carry your miracle home. Go touch somebody's life. And heaven will touch your life. 